What is going on guys, Grave here today. I'd like to give you some tips for Battlefield 2042 to kind of help you along the way. I know there's going to be a lot of new players coming to the game this Friday when the standard edition of the game launches. Before I get into all the details, be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky, where you can use code Grave at checkout to save 5%, and Amazon Associates. This is where I link all the stuff that I use when gaming, uh, recording videos, some items you might be interested in. Also check out the merch store that is linked in the description as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that sub button. Now, when it comes to Battlefield 2042, one of the hottest topics, I think, were the specialists. I'm not a fan of specialists, but I've kind of come to terms with it now. We're just going to have to get used to them and kind of use them uh, kind of just as they are. Uh, it does make the game feel a little bit watered down, in my opinion, compared to that traditional Battlefield play style, you know, where you had your specialists. Oh, you didn't have specialists. You know, you had your, you know, your traditional healers, your support characters, your recon characters, all that kind of stuff. Now, specialists, like I said, kind of water that feeling down because each of them have their own individual thing that they can do. But when it comes to everything else, you know, you can kind of use any weapon on them. You can use, you know, med packs, you know, ammo kits, all that good stuff that you would have to use in past Battlefield games traditionally on just one particular class itself. So now that the class system is gone, I would highly recommend finding a specialist that fits your play style. Like I said, they all have their own individual thing they can do that's different from the other uh, specialist in game. But you also can load them out with any weapon, load them out with, you know, uh, med kits and uh, load them out with things like, you know, support stuff for ammo. So whatever you want to do there, but just find something that fits your play style. And if you're hopping in the game on day one, there's three specialists that I would recommend trying out to begin with. That would be Sundance, Irish, and probably Angel. Those three are going to fit a lot of players' play styles out there. And I think you might find good success with those. There's also some really good ones, you know, that I did not mention. But those are three that you can try day one that you might really enjoy. The second thing I can tell you about Battlefield 2042, one thing that I really do like that they added into the game, even though the game has some problems, has some issues, there needs to be some fixes. It reminds me a lot of Battlefield 3 and 4 at times. And I know players that have played Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 may not have played those games. They may not have been Battlefield fans when Battlefield 3 and 4 were out. Uh, the game does need some work, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it is enjoyable. And the new plus system that they've added into the game is really enjoyable. This is where you can change your uh, weapon attachments on the fly. Just remember when you're using the plus system, everything that's closest to the middle of that, you know, kind of arrow that's going to pull up uh, or the, you know, the, the shape that's going to pull up there, kind of looks like the D-pad on a controller. Everything that's to the inside, to closest to the middle is going to be what you spawn with in game. But I love this system because you can go in and have, you know, your regular setup, uh, you know, that you spawn with every time. But if you want to change to more of a close quarters combat, more of a, you know, silent kind of stealthy class, all you have to do is just with a click of the button, change out the attachments you have slotted in those slots, and then you're good to go. And so this new plus system is a bit confusing to begin with, but once you get the hang of it, it is one of the coolest things that uh, Battlefield has added into the game this year, in my opinion. The game does have Bloom in it. I made a video about that yesterday. If you have not seen it, you might want to check that out. Of course, Bloom is kind of that random uh, variation of bullets. They're not always going to hit on target. The game does have some hit registration issues as well. And in order to help with that hit registration, I would recommend if there are really long range targets, considering these maps are so big, swap your weapon to single fire. I can absolutely destroy people with a submachine gun in single fire at long ranges. If I try to go full auto, I'm not really ever getting any hit markers on those enemies. And they're usually end up going, to, or they're going to end up beating me. A lot of people are using DMRs because DMRs right now are pretty popular because the way the bloom is and things of that nature, how it works, people seem to be a little bit more accurate, you know, if something, you know, like with a DMR that is single fire, but I'll just go ahead and put my, you know, SMG into single fire. If they're close range, I will go, of course, go back to, you know, kind of swapping over to that full auto. Uh, be sure you're also standing. If you're standing, you're not moving around. Battlefield still has that same kind of uh, process that it always has when it comes to how, you know, your, your, your aim is going to work. If you're moving around, you're strafing, which does help in some gunfights and it is uh, needed in some gunfights. The majority of the time, if you're moving while shooting, you're not going to be that accurate. Now, this year's game does have some attachments that are kind of beneficial to moving while firing, you know, your weapon. But for the most part, the best way to be the most accurate is going to be standing still, you know, crouching down or being prone. Those ways are going to make you a lot more accurate. And in my opinion, uh, those ways also seem to help kind of counteract some of that bloom that is available uh, or that is in game right now that is that kind of mechanic and the bloom on the assault rifles is absolutely awful. Uh, 
Another thing that I, I kind of want everybody to understand if you are new to the game, the maps, like I said, are absolutely massive and there can be people anywhere. Sometimes you'll just be used to running around and kind of being desolate because the maps are so big. And that's one complaint I have. The maps are so big, it feels like it takes you a long time to get to a fight. But there'll be that occasion where there'll be a sniper somewhere, you know, a team sitting in the bushes and you're not going to know they're there. So I'll just always be aware of your mini map. Don't get caught sprinting all the time. Of course, you have your normal sprint and kind of that tactical sprint. But if you're always sprinting, you're going to get beaten most gunfights because you're not going to be able to pull up ADS from, you know, sprint to, you know, to fire as quickly as a person that is, you know, kneeling somewhere, standing somewhere, posted up somewhere, waiting on you. So don't get caught out just sprinting nonstop. If you sprint too much, uh, you're going to end up getting uh, killed pretty quickly and pretty often. Also, call in vehicles to move around the map. You have that option now to call in vehicles from just your character menu from your comma rows. If you're stuck out somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you can call in a vehicle. Now, the only issue with this is if there's too many vehicles on the map, they will be grayed out and be unavailable. But for the most part, uh, you might not get a tank or a helicopter or something like that, but you at least can get a Jeep or something you know, that you can move from your location to wherever you're needing to go quickly because the maps are huge and it takes a long time on foot to get somewhere and it is very annoying to run somewhere for five minutes and then turn around and get shot as soon as you get there. So make sure you uh, make use of that comma rose to where you can call in vehicles to kind of move you around the map a little quicker. Uh, one thing that I didn't really mention when it comes to, you know, how to improve your aim, I was talking about standing, kneeling and being prone was make sure that you're burst firing your weapon. If you're in full auto burst fire, if there are targets, like I said, at long range, put it in single fire, burst fire has always been a thing in battlefield. So make sure that you're accounting for, you know, range, make sure you're accounting for that balloon they've added in the game. Make sure you're also accounting for the, uh, the bullet drop in general. Battlefield has a good bit of bullet drop at distance. So make sure that you're uh, taking advantage of all these things in each individual fight that you're going to be in. Uh, the last thing, I guess, and this is always a, a thing in Battlefield, is play the objective. Uh, playing the objective and, you know, participating with your team, with your squad, using the role that you have picked, using the specs that you have picked to help out, you know, your team or squad is big when it comes to Battlefield 2042. Yes, you can run around and get a lot of kills on a tank. You can run around and get a lot of kills on foot. But if you're not really helping the team in general, uh, you're not really going to be successful. And there's a lot of people out there that are going to gripe and complain if you're not playing the objective. And I do understand that it does get annoying. But at the same time, if you just try to help out the team, uh, you know, you revive people, give them ammo, you know, help with whatever, like I said, well, with whatever specialist you have, you help out that team, uh, you know, with the benefits that your specialist brings, your teammates will be very grateful. Uh, of course, your squad mates, uh, squad mates are going to be very grateful as well. So just make sure you're playing the objective and enjoying yourself. Of course, you know, we have this, uh, I'm playing the classic, you know, just the conquest mode. There's other game modes as well. There's other game modes in the portal that are a lot of fun to play. So just kind of find, you know, your groove, find the things you like to play in Battlefield 2042, play the objective, help your team out. And that's pretty much all anybody can ask. Uh, it's going to take a little bit to get used to. It's uh, kind of different to me because like I said, it's that Battlefield 3, that Battlefield 4 kind of style, that kind of gameplay, that movement. I know a lot of people out there are going to be used to playing Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 over the last several years. It's been a long time since we've had a modern style Battlefield game, so it feels a lot different. And trying to get uh, trying to get your settings and controls and all that stuff right is a pain as well. If, you have, uh, if you're having issues, I do have a settings video out that does help out a lot on console because the aim assist is pretty much non-existent. You can turn crossplay off if you feel like, you know, without that aim assist. Uh, that you're kind of getting destroyed, you know, by mouse and keyboard players. You can turn crossplay off, and I will say I've turned it off to test it, and uh, without crossplay on, it still finds games very quickly, at least here on the PS5 side. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you like, hit the like, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.